Hello, blank screens, waiting. Somebody might put the screens on. Hello, Grace Petrucciani. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, David. Hello, Hemna. Hi, Baikida. Good afternoon. Happy New Year. Same to you, my friend. How are you? Fantastic. Jacqueline's a big year this year. Yeah, we're going to have a fun year this year. Well, was I just on mute? You didn't hear me, did you? I didn't hear you what you were saying. I I yes, it's going to be a big year, full time. I'm excited. Kudos to you. Oh my God, I'm nervous. Andrew's in the house with a jacket on. I got layers on today, Jay. Uh -huh. I'm expecting a lot. How you feeling? Fe feeling much better now. Hopefully in a couple of days, I should be back. Let's see if I can. No, you don't see the doors behind. This is better. All right, we'll wait for a couple more minutes. <clears throat> Hi, Jennifer. Hello, Chris. Hello, Tanya. If you guys can put your cameras on, that would be great. I'll appreciate it. And you can still be distracted. You can still chat, text, work. All good. Chris, be careful when you're driving. You know. All right, so let's get, let's get started. Three or two, and how's everyone doing today? I look like a ghost here. Let me change this. So you're gonna see the doors behind. I'm stuck in a bedroom, I'm quarantining. I tested positive last week, so two, two, two more days, but then it should be okay. So I can be in the office, but I'm still working. No excuses like Ankit says. 75 day hard, no excuses. All right, so today's topic, thanks for being here. Today's topic that I prepared for is personal development. Is it development or development? It's an Indian accent. How do you say, Jacqueline? Development. Development, all right. Either way, I, 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 think, I, think, I think I understand the concepts. So I'll help you guys understand. So if you get, you know what I mean when I say development or development. Hemna, are you from India? Me? Yes. Oh, sorry. No, um, my parents are from Pakistan. Okay. Okay. So you, yeah. you speak, you, you, you were born and brought up here? Yes, but I understand everything you're saying. So. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yeah. That's good. Sounds good. All right, here's the class. Can everybody see my screen with the uh, PowerPoint? All right, great. So let's get started. All right, the topic is, if you can dream it, you can live it. So leverage your talents by creating a personal development plan to begin living your dreams. A lot of us have big vision and big goals. I don't think many of us take, or take the time to write on a piece of paper. If you don't write on a piece of paper and you don't measure it, you don't, you, you don't look at it again and again, I think it becomes a challenge to understand the path where you're going in life. This is based on, do you know Brian Tracy? He's a, he's a great author. It's one of his big, uh, most famous books. Uh, I taught a class on that one as well, is Eat, Eat That Frog. It's a great, great book. So if you have not read it, it's a great book. Uh, it, it's a great coach. Um, uh, he writes, he has started tons and tons of books in the last three decades. Uh, this is based on some of his materials as well. So most people will passively do exactly what they did last year. Whatever you do, don't let that person be you. It happens by default in our lives. We tend to do exactly what we did last year because that's a normal pattern. But we know the results that our pattern got last year. You see that in your numbers, you see that in your health, you see that in your habits. You know exactly what that's gonna give you. If you're happy with that, great, but that doesn't mean that you can't improve yourself. 
Every year we should thrive in getting ourselves better. So whatever you did last year is that if, that, if that's the minimum you did this year, the concept is you're slowly losing then staying stagnant. You don't want to do that. Don't let that person be you. All right, today's agenda. We're going to talk about what is personal development plan? What is personal development? Personal development versus self-improvement. Seven main categories of personal development. Why make a personal, why make a plan? And how to set goals? And I'll show you a template that you can use, uh, that you can use for yourself as well. So what is a personal development plan? An outline to help you create and identify your goals. You need to write down on a piece of paper what you think you want your future to be. A guideline for your life and for your future success. An accountability plan to keep you on track and a guide to help you accomplish any goal at any time. It'll help you understand the person you want to be, the skills you want to learn, an accomplishment you want to achieve. This will then map out your short-term and long-term goals for when you want to reach them. How many of you guys have some sort of a plan that you have created? It's fantastic. With all, you, with all honesty, I have not. And I'm, and I'm realizing it that I have, I have short-term goals that I create, and I'm struggling with my long-term goals. I still don't know what my five-year and 10-year plan looks like. But in 2022, my, that, was my, that, that was my thought in 2021. I'm gonna make sure that I design a long-term plan for myself. And I think I got to some places, but I got stuck at every step of the way. And if you're the same way, you need to start asking those questions more often so you can answer them to get to the point of writing your goals. It's not easy. It's not easy today to tell what you want to be in 10 years from now and stick to that one path and make sure that you succeed on that one. And then the fear of what if I pick the wrong path? It's a fear that allows us not to pick that path knowing that it's too risky. So it's, you know, if, if, I, if I wanted to be, uh, be an OP or run Keller Williams and you know, acquire more Keller Williams as, as my path or you know, uh, uh, grow into this, into this region, that's one path. And if I do that, I have to design the whole goals around it. And then I have to plan my life, how I'm going to achieve it. But then the fear comes in, is that what I really want? Am I going to be, if that's so desirable today, am I going to desire that 10 years from now? And that's a fear more than anything else. It's not a fear of achieving it. It's a fear of picking the wrong option. So, so, so how do you do that? But if I don't define something, then which path am I taking? Am I just running on a day-to-day -day basis to just work seven days a week to find out where I land eventually? You know, David's calling might be he wants to do the best home inspection company in the world. Maybe that's his calling. Maybe it's not. Maybe he wants, maybe he wants to save lives and be a firefighter, which he also contributes. So, you know, uh, and I know a little bit about Dave, so I'm mentioning him, uh, uh, you know, and then are those things going to satisfy you? And if that's what you want your life to be and you're satisfied, you've done a fantastic job defining those terms. But if you have not, what help can you get from outside to help you achieve that? So what is a personal development? The process of improving oneself through conscious habits and activities. One thing I want to actually remind everybody, there is no secret sauce. When, people, when I go to classes like this, or when I go to like a conversation like this, sometimes I hope, oh my God, they're gonna teach me the secret sauce that I can read in two minutes, or there's gonna be a formula that I can start doing it from like, if I wake up at 6.05 a.m. instead of 6.03, like my life would change tomorrow morning. Or if I do you know, 30 minutes of exercise a day, uh, you know, I can be in the world record. There's, there's, there's no shortcuts in life. But we don't want to discuss things that are most obvious because they're so boring. It's like all the tasty stuff makes me fat. But I don't want to take the time and energy in, in figuring out how to make quinoa salad much more tastier. Because it's, it's, because it's not as easy. It's not as sexy. 
I need to do things that are easier and looks better. But if that was a path, then everybody else would have taken it. And then we didn't have to talk to other people who are, who have excelled in their careers and businesses that we can look up to and say, how did you do it? So if we do the most basics obvious, but in a most consistent manner, it all comes down to one thing. It's your mindset. If you work on your mindset, if you work on how you're going to live your life in the most optimum way, that's going to create opportunities and create open. But the magic number is what? How many times you just follow up with people to get a potential answer from them? We want to take a guess. How many times? Caitlin. Around 12? Yeah, it's about eight. 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 You have to follow up with an average time of eight times with people to get a result from them. How many of us follow up with eight times? I don't. Unless I have a system that does it for me, I'm, I, I don't call eight times. I call them, left a message, text message, they didn't call, move on to the next one. We do the same thing in our lives. I did, a, I did a workout for a week. I ate healthy for two weeks. I went for a walk for three weeks. I didn't see the results. What the heck? Let's move on. Same thing with our business and careers. So the process of improving oneself through conscious habits and activities, conscious habits and activities. Successful leaders continuously self-improve and understand that nothing is a substitute of hard work. Jacqueline uh, is proud that uh, she, she is now full-time in real estate as of 2022. That's her commitment to put in hard work. Kudos to you. Thank you. From, from the moment you wake up until the moment you go to sleep, each experience is a factor in your development. When you can take control of your experiences, you can control your personal development and hit the fast lane to your goals. Most of the time, what you think about is what you become. You have to start believing in your mind what I want to be for you to start working for that. If you don't believe you can achieve it, how will you ever live it? But even if you, even if you believed in it, if you don't put a plan together, then you're not going to achieve it either. So we're going to talk more about that. When you take greater control over your experiences, you are able to guide your personal development and accelerate toward what you want to become instead of leaving it to chance, right? So if you want, if you want to take control of your experiences, you're able to control what you're going to become. So now the question is, if I want to know what I'm going to become, I need to take more control on my experiences. But how do I take more control on my experiences? Focusing on your personal development also gives you better decision-making abilities. So you can avoid problems that may have plagued you in the past or are holding you back. Well, I like doing it things this way. I've always done things this way. Have you heard agents ever say, I've been doing this for the last 25 years? I always think to myself, I always think to myself, I don't say, shoot me if I say that ever in my 25 years, if I'm doing the exact same thing, which was wrong for 25 years. It's just because of my habit. And I don't want to learn from anybody else, so I'm never going to get better. So now what's the difference between a personal development and a self-improvement? A personal development is the work you put in every day to advance your work, your lifestyle, your attitude, your physique, or your sociability. You put in that work. But I can lift some weights and I can build some muscles. That's my physique. I can change. I can go walk. I can run. I can uh, read books. I can change. You know, I, I can go to work on a daily basis, as a routine. There's all my things that I can do for my personal development. But a self-improvement is an inner transformation to improve your character, status, or knowledge. So my internal character of integrity is going to tell me to wake up every morning at five o'clock to do a workout that'll help my personal development. My, so my self-improvement has to come in first 
to help me with my personal development later. If I don't do that, it's very hard to stay consistent with my physical activities. Life is a life, this is a lifelong process to change your habit, to reach your fullest potential. You know, one thing that I, that I uh, somebody told me a few years ago was, how many CEOs uh, do you know in the top companies today that are extremely overweight? Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Google, Apple, Facebook. And how come, how come these people are running the most big? Amazon, Jeff Bezos. How come all these people are running the largest organizations of the world? And they are still finding time to do things to keep them healthy. Gary Keller, Andrew. How come these guys are so, so much in shape? Because they have mastered the art and understanding of what it takes for self-improvement to help them with their personal development. They have figured out a plan that works. It's just, it's not, it's not a matter of money. It's not a matter of leverage. It's not a matter of just delegating to other people. It's a matter of creating that plan that will help you achieve those things. Now the question is how badly do you want it? How organized you are to create it? And how consistent are you going to be in following it? So your personal development can lead to self-improvement as well. The seven categories of personal development, your personal skills, personal growth, power, improvement, empowerment, analysis, objectives. So don't get lost in the, in the, in the terminologies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about a little bit more in detail. So what are personal skills in life? Some of us are, some of us are born with it. Some we can devel develop through deliberate practice. I can do this every day, which I refer to as soft skills. I, I wasn't born with it, but I have developed them. And then the top producers and individuals continuously work on their personal skills. You have to maintain it, otherwise you lose it. How many of us are born as a salesperson? You know, they say either you're born with it or not, right? I don't think that's true, actually. I personally don't think that people are born being a salesperson. I think people grow up being a salesperson is the life experiences on the way that helps them become a good salesperson. So it's a trade that you unknowingly learn over the path. And if you ask a lot of salespeople, they'll say, you know, I sold uh, lemonade at the age of six. You know, I did this business with a friend by selling them, uh, by fixing their tires or the bicycles on the street where I laid on my own nails. Like whatever it might be, right? They're always being this entrepreneurial mind, but they have been around other people that have helped them become that. It's a skill that they developed. Now, if you want to be the best in your business, are you spending the time and energy in developing that your skill as well? Examples of personal skills, your decision-making, teamwork, organization, and communication. These are, these are traits people can develop very easily. Your personal growth requires you to step outside your comfort zone. To help you get personal growth, you have to step outside your comfort zone. We are all consistently evolving and not the same person we were a year ago. How can you strive to be a better version of yourself today than you were yesterday? What do you need to do that you haven't done that you need to do to get better? Most of us don't even understand that part. In many instances, I have no idea of the things that I don't take the time to analyze, what am I doing wrong that I shouldn't be doing again? Just becomes, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe a way I, I teach a class. Maybe it's a, some things are, could be improved and I don't focus on that. Areas of personal growth, your personality, your beliefs, your world outlook and your education. That's your personal growth. The more you read, the more you talk, the more you mastermind, 
things will change. Today itself, we have about 20, 20 some people in this room. The thing that we're gonna be talking, that we are talking about, somewhere in, in, in your brain is gonna trigger a, a reasoning to question at least one item in life. That itself could change the career path that you have for the rest of your life. Just one thing. Every experience counts to change the career path of our lives. It's a decision making that we have to do. Your personal power. Influence and command others believe you have in certain situations. Right? Some people may think I have more experience. That's a personal power that I have over them that they may think I have more information. By default, if I think of singing, I know Kate sings very well. She has a personal power over me. If there's a conversation about singing, I already know that I don't know enough, of, enough as much she does. I'll, I'll probably give in to whatever she says. This is this tone. Great. I agree with you. It's a power that I acknowledge because of her experience. That's the personal power that she has. The wider your personal circle, the more doors will open. The more you surround yourself with people who are experts in the industry of what you want to achieve, it will open more opportunities. Talk to anyone in life and ask them to go back in steps of where they started. There will be every step of the way they will mention to you, I met this person at the bar. I met this person at a holiday party. I met this person at a conference. Imagine if that person decided not to go to that holiday party. They may not have met the, their love of life. I met my business partner at a happy hour. Introduced to somebody over at a bar, meet, meet this new person, he runs a business, you run the business, you're in the same business, say hello to each other. We've been together for 11 years now. It's my, 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 my work wife, Ben Aller. How to increase your personal power? How can I increase that? But I have to increase my network. I have to increase my knowledge. If I didn't talk intelligently in that conversation, my personal power would not have allowed me to be in business with the gentleman. I have to grow your, you have to grow your financial status. If people say, you want to sell a million dollar home? Dress like a million dollar baby. People will believe in you because you'll have the personal power. Why does every luxury agent dress up top to bottom in a suit, high heels, uh, a clean, well-dressed. Why, why, do they, why do they try to do that? Because they want to present to you that I can live the life that you live. And I can help you achieve what you're trying to achieve. You can have faith in me and believe in me by the looks that I have. That's trying to create a personal power. Personal improvement stems from good work habits and having a positive, positive mental attitude. Think before you act. How to self-improve. Write a list of priorities and consider the consequences before you begin. It's the power of writing and, and going over your stuff. Working on your mental attitude and personal improvement will help reduce the time it takes to reach your goals. If you have a clear, defined path, it's going to make it easier and faster to get there. Then running in the forest and trying to find your way out. You will probably get there, probably maybe, maybe not, but you'll probably get there. It's take you much longer. So the question is where do you, you, know, you want to get there faster and be the first or be one of the first or be happy that you got there as fast as you could or you'll figure out on the way. Personal empowerment. It's similar to personal power, except empowerment is the power you see within yourself instead of how others view you. The power you see within yourself will define the way you create things that others will start looking into you. Promote a positive image and implement creativity in your daily life. Example of a personal empowerment. Think of a way to finish a project easier, faster, or under budget without compromising the end result. If you, if you put your mind to it, focus on the project. I can guarantee you each one of us can make things better. 
It's about dedication and how we're going to do it. But that's how you have to believe in yourself. I can do this. We always believe we can, we can swim a lot more. We can swim a little bit faster. We can run a little bit faster. We can make a little bit more money. You have to start believing in yourself and then it happens, right? Oh, I set a goal for you know, $100,000 this year. Last year was 80 and I did it. What did you do different this year than last year? We work the same number of hours. So how come, how come people make more money one year than the other year? It's because this year they decided they're going to make more money. And then everything they did was based on the actions to achieve that result. Till that time, they didn't believe they could make $100,000. They thought they wanted to make $50,000. Then their actions and their activities did exactly to get them $50,000. Then they became 70, then became 80, then became 100. They were their own bottleneck. Activities didn't change. Or they changed some of their actions or activities based on what they believe they wanted to achieve. Knowing others is intelligence. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. You need to focus on yourself. Personal analysis. Consciously understanding your gifts and areas that need improvement. Consistently evaluate yourself. I think this is probably the biggest, biggest thing that I can think of for myself and for you guys right now that what, how, do you, how do you get better? Unless you analyze yourself and, 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 and agree and, and, and confirm that maybe there's some places that I can get better. Here, I've been reading this book, Tax-Free Wealth. The only reason this book came by, it was because time to file taxes again. Talked to my friend and said, last year was good. So what should I do? I may have to pay a lot of taxes. He says, have you been paying taxes every year? I say, a lot, and I hate it. He says, what are you doing about it? I like, nothing. I just have to pay taxes. And he says, do you, do, you know, do you know a lot of tax rules that are allowed? I said, my accountant takes care of it. He says, He's, he, may, he or she may not know the details. You have to be in control of your own destiny. So, and I, so my, I, I, as a, you know, I just asked him, I said, what would you do? I said, I'm going to gain more knowledge in understanding what I can do to change things on my side. I'm going to talk to a lot more people who have done this and have done a better job in doing it. Maybe talk to two accountants, maybe talk to three accountants. Maybe talk to more business people who have some ideas. And then, so, and then one of them, uh, uh, there was a mastermind happening, and they were talking about, uh, uh, about uh, the legal tax, uh, uh, legal tax loopholes allowed for a, in a business. I said, well, that's interesting. Uh, and then it talked about a lot about real estate and how you can deduct and depreciate much faster. So well, that's very interesting. I never knew that. And then somebody mentioned this, the guy who does it, he wrote a book. He said, you know, why don't you read this book? And then he, can, he does another mastermind, which is very expensive, but you probably save a lot of taxes. All the thing I'm telling you is because if I didn't start talking and, and discussing things and I'm going to improve my knowledge, how, how, how would I have realized I needed help here? I've been running a business for almost 15 years. I never in my life thought, I thought you make money, you pay taxes. You tell your accountant where I can save it. So don't rely on just your previous experiences. You've got to change that. And if you get better from last year, you'll find new opportunities. How to analyze yourself. You have to be truthful. Let your ego down. Consider where you are versus your goals and ambitions. It is very important to be conscious of areas in which you are naturally gifted as well, as analyze areas in which you need improvement. You might be really good. I might be really good in numbers, and that's why maybe taxation might be easier coming to me. If it's not the best thing for you, you have to go find ways of helping yourself. Same thing with sales and prospecting and backend admin, creativity, design work, and on and on. You have to know what you're good at and where you need to improve. Your personal objectives. 
Ambition goes to waste when there are no clear goals in sight. Ambition goes to waste when there are no clear goals in sight. Set short-term and long-term goals. What to do when you have an objective? Create a plan with measurable objectives. Find a strategy for your plan. Keep analyzing your plan until your goals are reached and alter your strategy or plan as needed. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that in the template as well. So why make a plan? It reminds you of where you wanna go. It increases the probability of success. It better prepares you for what is coming your way, improves your time management, and proven to reduce stress, bring better life balance and increase self-confidence. Creating a personal development plan can be the difference between success and failure. There are no limits except for the limits you place on yourself with your thinking. Each one of us has the same potential. It's how we do it, how do we go about working at it or working for it is what defines one person other than the other one. I always, I always think about myself as Bill, uh, Gary Keller is, is, a, is a great mentor. Uh, is, is, a, is a company that he founded and we are all part of it. Uh, though we are independent business people, we are still somewhere using his platform to succeed. He has the same 24 hours like we do, seven days a week like we do. How come he achieves so much more than most of us combined? Got lucky? He works more harder than us? I don't think either one of us true. I think he. I think he decided at one point he's going to start a franchise in the largest residential brokerage company in the world, and he set out figuring out a plan how to achieve it, and then started working on it. I haven't done that, and neither have you. Under somebody, some of you might have done it, but I haven't done it. If I don't know what I want to shoot for and achieve, I didn't create a plan for that. I will never achieve it. You never win a lottery ticket unless you buy one. Where the probability is very, very low for you to win a Super Bowl or a Powerball, I should say. But it's guaranteed zero if you don't buy a ticket. How to set personal development goals? Self-reflect. What do I want to make out of my life? What are my goals and ambitions? And what is currently standing in my way to achieve these goals? Create your... Hello, Kate, stop limping. She can't hear you. Okay. No, she can't hear you. All right, create your plan with smart goals. Be specific, be measurable, achievable, so specific, you have to set up detailed and clear goals. Measurable, you have to set milestones so you understand that okay, I have met them over a period of time. Achievable, they should be challenging but still realistic. I, 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 don't, I, I can't fly to the moon tomorrow, I just can't. It needs to be relevant. It needs to align with my personal self-improvement plan. Otherwise, it, it's, not, it's, it's no use doing it. And it has to be time-bound. I have to pick an end date. By when am I going to accomplish that? Just a couple more slides. We're going to open it up for conversation. How to set professional goals. To grow in your professional life, you need to thoroughly document your personal development. Personal development plan, examples for work. What do I want to learn? What do I have to do? What support and resources do I need? And how will I measure success? But just, just think about it for a second. Put that in your family. What do I need to learn? What do I have to do to have a great family? What support and resources do I need to support to my family, for my family? And how will I measure success in my family? Same thing with your personal health. Same thing with your business. Then you can break it down with your family and friends. Every step of the way, you can create a personal development plan for yourself to say, what do I need and what do I want? 
And how am I going to do, go about doing it? And how am I going to how, how am I going to measure success that I have a great marriage? How do you measure that success? I'm a great father. How do you measure the success? I have a happy family. How do you measure the success? And what do I need to be able to provide for my family to make them a success? How about your business? What will make you a success at the end of 2022? Was 2021 a success? Did we all did fantastic in 2021 or we all rode the cycle in 2021? Do you have the same market share or more market share than last year? Is that, is, it, is, it, it, is that something that you can maintain and continue to do the same thing year after year? That's the case, you did fantastic. If you, didn't, if you think you rode the cycle, don't, be, don't lie to yourself. If you got lucky by, uh, actually nobody gets lucky, but if you had three exceptional sales this year that you don't know you'll be able to get next year again because they were all $1.8 million deals, miracle is not going to happen. This last two years, though it was the most interesting and challenging, were very good for almost everybody in almost every business, almost. I'm sure there are exceptions to some cases. But you have to be true to yourself. So goal setting, set goals in your daily life and outside of work. What do I want to achieve? If you're not happy in your personal life, how are you gonna be happy in your work life? If you're not happy in your work life, how are you gonna be happy in your personal life? I should work when I come back home. You should work when you come back home, but it carries with you in your brain. You can't shut that. It's very, very hard. Very, very hard to do that. And if I woke up in the morning and I had a fight with my wife, when I go to work, it's going to reflect no matter what. If I had a bad day yesterday, it's going to reflect no matter what. Can't, cannot change so easily. So what do I want to achieve in my life? What is my deadline? How, how fast do I want to achieve independence, financial independence, passive income? How, how fast do I want to get married? How fast do I want to buy my first home? How fast do I want to retire? How fast do I want to make certain amount of money? How fast do I want to create my brand? What is it? How fast? And what are you going to do about it? And have you taken the time to create a plan for it? What is my biggest strength? What is my biggest threat? Plan your day and set your goals. Take a few minutes each morning and write down your 10 goals for the day. This will help your subconscious mind and will help you follow through on accomplishing them. That actually came over a habit over the past, I don't know from where I picked it up. Uh, I check my calendar uh, every Sunday for the whole week. I check my calendar every morning for the whole day, but I also check my calendar the previous night for the next day. I just start thinking about my day, how it's going to play out. And in the morning, when I'm having a cup of coffee, I do write down my four or five most important to-do items that I need to finish that day. And I work off that list that day. Other things will come up, but these are four or five things that I really have to accomplish to call my day a success. Concentrate on a high value activities. The activities that will bring you the biggest return for your efforts. In summary, use a personal development plan template to help you become a top achiever and prevent you from underperforming. Set your main goals, identify your current strengths, decide on your key areas of, for development, research the skills you will need to achieve your goals. It can be easy, you have to dedicate the time. Start taking action on it. Give yourself a clear time frame for each goal. I think we should set 2022 as a, as a deadline for a lot of goals this year and track your progression. To achieve what you want to achieve at the end of the year, you have to measure that on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, on a semi-annual basis, and then the annual basis. In KW, we call it a 411. Set an annual goal, set a monthly goal, and then four weeks out of the month, set a weekly goal. And just measure it. I want to make $100,000 a year. That means I have to make $8,333.33 a month. 
That means I have to make 2,033 some dollars a week. Well, why am I carrying about $100,000? I gotta make $2,000 a week. Well, if, well I, then I need a, a million dollar sale to make $100,000. Not really. I need to rent two leases a week to make $100,000. So either I can make two leases or I can sell one sale every, every week. Or if I sell $4,000 and my average commission is 300,000 times two and a half percent is 7,500 bucks, that means I have to sell one sale every month. But I can't skip it. If that, and I can't build my business to have only one sale a month because if that, if, if that falls apart, unfortunately, then I lose that whole month. That's how I end up being at 50,000. I started with 100 because I didn't have any, any contingencies in play. But if I set up for two sales every month and either I achieved it, then I overachieved my goals, or if one fell apart, I achieved my goals that I set out to be. But now that we have to talk about is what actions am I going to take to achieve those? So that's all I had from here. I'm going to share the template with you. Let's see. Template. Okay, and, I, and, and everybody who registered today, uh, my associate Nikki will send this template uh, to you guys. You can see this personal development plan. Okay. Do you know what you'll be doing in five years from now? I don't, but I'd like to know. So I'm gonna be doing this myself as well for 2022 at least. Set your main goals. Examples, I wanna make $100,000 next year. I want to move up in my career, become a manager, or whatever it might be. This is not specific to real estate, so whatever it might be. This can also be your personal goal. My main goal in health is something. My main goal in personal life is something. I want to donate X number of dollars a year. Well, you got to make the money to donate it. Identify your current strengths. You need to know what you're good at so you can exemplify those things to maximize the return. So what are your current strengths? For example, I'm great at talking to people, understanding their needs, and have a range of experience in customer service-based roles. I'm great in new construction, I'm great in rentals, I'm great in luxury, I'm great in the city, I'm great in first-time home buyer programs. I'm, you know, what, what, what are you good at? Good at something. If you're not good at something, well, guess how much education you need to, to further improve yourself in? Because you can be. I often draw in my spare time and have a high interest in creative projects but I can help people when they're buying with interior home projects and construction and renovations, whatever it might be. Uh, you know, I, I'm gonna, Dave, I'm gonna pick on you once again. I, I have been on few home inspections with you. You know, one thing that Dave never fails to mention, this is a security hazard. And you know, I used to be, a, I'm a firefighter. And that's how I know, and I've done this for years. He always brings his other experiences into his current business. That's the strength he knows and he brings back into this business. I always appreciate that about you, Dave. Thank you. I appreciate that. Decide on your key areas for development. What, what do you need to improve on? We often draw a blank when it comes to the common interview question. What are your weaknesses? The reason why most people are blank about it is because they don't take the time to think about it. I'll share something personal with, with you guys as well. I realized and analyzed after trying to work out and losing 10 new year resolutions to losing weight about four or five years ago, I realized I am not good in self accountability for my health. I finally accepted it. I am just not good at it. I'm very dedicated for the first one week or two weeks or one month. I'm just not good in self-accountability for my personal health. Unless and until I, somebody can hold me accountable, I am never gonna be able to achieve my goals. 
So at that point, I went and hired a, a, a very expensive, unfortunately, for what money I was making at that time, a personal trainer. I couldn't lose five pounds in a year for 10 years in a row. I just kept gaining and gaining. In my first year, I lost 20 pounds. And that, that sealed the deal for me. Now, either it's a friend or a coach or a Zoom call. I need that. I have, I have analyzed it. And even till date, I know if my coach, if my trainer cancels on me, nine out of 10% chances are I'm going to cancel on myself. I still don't have it. Because a lot of my friends will say, well, after you spend so much money, why can't you wake up yourself? Now it's a habit. Waking up is a habit. I need the alarm. I'll still wake up by myself. I will just not work out. But you have to, you have to agree. You have to understand what are you made of? What are you good at? What are you not good at? And then don't fight it. Find a solution for it. We try to fight our weaknesses in, as, as if accepting them is an embarrassment. I don't have to be so self-motivated like somebody else would be. I just have to find a solution to it. What makes me better than what it makes me better is I have to find a solution. But I have to I have to I have to accept what, what you know what what I need help with as well. My web design skills are basic and will need to be more advanced for me to progress in this field. Well, I'm not good in social media, so I just don't do social media marketing. I understand social media is the place to go and and then uh, get my business today. I see others doing it. I hear people say they build a whole business on Instagram. I just don't like social media. But if you don't like it, if you're not good at it, go hire somebody. Nobody said you can't make, make, make opportunities and create leads by hiring somebody else. Just don't give it up. So write down these things here. Research the skills you'll need to achieve your goals. If you need to get better at something, what do you need to do? Example, I need to take an intensive course on coding for web development. I'll need to demonstrate at least a year's experience in the marketing field before I can join a bigger agency. You have to identify what skills do you need. I want to sell a million dollar home. What skills do you need for that? I want to sell new construction. Do you understand new construction? Can you tell somebody for them to believe in you in the first conversation that, that you know way more than, more than somebody else so they can believe in you in buying the biggest asset of their lives. And start taking action. Don't procrastinate. Don't think about it. Don't, don't wait for the next, happy, next birthday or Thanksgiving to come by for you to start. Start today. It doesn't have to be a Monday. So Friday, start on Friday. You know, most of the people have a, uh, have a, a new year resolution, right? So 66-day challenge, 60-day challenge, 75-day challenge. Uh, I'm on a eight-week challenge. Uh, there, there's so many things that are out there right now that motivates us to get started on January 1. But then we may finish that and then things change and people gain the weight back because we, because we don't realize that we loved the challenge we hated the consistency. So challenges are good for the three, four, six, eight, ten 10 weeks. But then we may not be good at other things. We, unless we, unless we ad address that, maybe we should have a challenge every eight weeks for the rest of my life. That'll keep me in check. But then it's, a, then it's a, what do I want and what am I willing to give up for that? I'm not willing to give up sugar for eight weeks, every eight weeks for the rest of my life. Well, that's unacceptable. So that's my problem. Dig deeper, guys. Dig deeper. The last thing is give yourself a clear timeline for each goal. You need to achieve this by when. And then track it. See how far you have come. See what is missing. See what you can change. You know, even, even, even every game, basketball, football, every place has a halftime in between so they can reset what they have learned and how they're going to play the remaining half. It's not like they go in and they finish the whole thing. They come in between, regroup, re-strategize, and change their strategy for the next half. You could do the same. Just because you are struggling in the first quarter doesn't mean the next three quarters have to fail. 
Just because you're struggling the first month doesn't mean the next 11 months have to fail. Just because you didn't, you're struggling the first one week doesn't mean the next 51 weeks have to fail. You just reset. You can set on a daily basis. You can set at an hourly basis. At lunchtime, every day was set to reset people, their, their, their fatigue on a daily basis. You work for four hours, you reset for the next four hours. We'll send this to everybody else as well so that you have it. And then let's have a conversation. What do you guys think? So I talked a lot. Now somebody has to talk a little bit so I can drink water. Come on, 10 minutes. Hey, I'll chime in for you. Why not? <laughs> um, so you, when you first started out, Baroff, I was, I was thinking about a lot of these coffee with Chris hours that I, that I go to every, every other week. Um, and there, there were two things that popped into my head. But the first one is uh, you want to surround yourself with, the, with those five important people. Those five people that are going to lift you up. Those five people that you know, may already be where you want to be. Because when we, when we have that, that inner group of five people that are doing less than us, then we play down to that level and, and we sacrifice our own game. But you know, one of the things I've learned out of, I think we've known each other about three and a half uh, years now. And um, I surround myself with guys like you and Chris and, and, you know, a lot of the bigger producers at the market center, because that's where I want to be. That's where I want my success to be. But it's important to know that, you know, when, as you're surrounding yourself with those five people, you know, those five people can change. And apologies, my dog's barking in the back. Um, but you, you constantly have to reevaluate who that inner inner circle of five people are because you can learn a lot from them. But at the at some point, if all those other five people are are doing nothing but learning from you, who do you have left to learn from? You've got to be able to reevaluate it um, for yourself. Uh, the other thing is we have so many newer agents, and um, something I learned a long time ago, and my wife's just getting home, so I can say it: don't be afraid to ask out the prettiest girl in class. And uh, <laughs> that, that kind of goes with what we do in real estate when we're talking about million dollar listings. You know, if you've never done a million dollar listing, it doesn't mean that you can't. You know, a lot of times we, we have that fear of like, oh, I can't do this because I'm, I'm a month into the game and I've never been a realtor before. And if, if you're not afraid to go after it, then you're going to get the million dollar listing. And you're going to continue. Many, to many, yeah, many, many people ask me, you know, how does black, how did black label do it? Black label did their first sale at one point in their lives. Everyone did their first sale at some point in their lives. So you never have to worry about how they did it. You have to worry, you have to, have to worry about how do I do it and what can I learn from you to do the same that you have done. The, the easiest way to become number one is to, do, is to look at who's number one, learn every single thing you can learn from them, do exactly what they do, and one more. That's all it takes. You know the reason why, the, the, if you go back in history and look at any sport, the number of scores, the number of goals they uh, uh, make in a, in, in a, in a game, the speed at which they run a 100-meter race, 400-meter race, how fast they swim. You, you, you think, you, you think that pe people were not fast enough in the, in the past? They were. They just never believed in themselves that they could do better than that time. The fastest man on the planet runs a 10-second 100 meters. Well, then somebody said, well, I can beat that. Then somebody's at seven, somebody's at eight, somebody's at seven, you know, then it's speaking by the seconds. Every year, somebody beats the next person. And you know, they also say that the, the reason why the next generation becomes better than the first generation is because they don't have those limitations of the previous generations. I'm going to run as fast as I can and looks like the fastest guy is I'm using a number, seven, se seven seconds and 7.02 seconds. Well, that's all I know. So if I want to win, I got to do 7.01. That's the only way to win. I don't have to go back to 1965 and take 10.01 seconds. 
they look at what's the best today and they have to be a little better. And every year in the Olympics, somebody breaks the world record in almost every goddamn game. So people get better and better. And they say, oh no, there's a shoes of the better. Oh no, it's uh, the technology, the training. Sure, all those things matter, but it's a mindset that really, really allows you to achieve that. So focus on your mindset, guys. It has nothing to do, the, the, the technicality, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the things that you need to learn on a, tra- on a transaction base, you know, the uh, consistency that you have to offer, the uh, education, the training, all those things will come if this is ready for it. And if this is not ready for that, everything else is useless. Ambitions means nothing if you're not going to work on it or act on it. So why don't I work on something that will help me achieve that? If my challenge is me, why am I not working on me? I, I, have, been with, I, I have been with the same company and the same team, majority part of my life. I could be way better than I am today, but I think I'm doing as well as I think I can by being in the same place. It has nothing to do with me going to California or LA and selling a $5 million homes. It has nothing to do with it. I can still, there are people in other, uh, other places that I meet in KW who are, her average price is 175000 Harrisburg. I have a friend in Harrisburg, in Coral Banker. $175,000 average does $85 million a year. Average $175,000 transaction. How many more transactions? He has to do double the number of transactions with our average. If you ask somebody to us and say, I'm going to give you a lead for $175,000, half of you will say it's not worth my time. That's all they do. That's all they do. So it's all in the mindset. So start focusing on things that will really help you change everything in life by starting here. Then things will change. All right, I start talking again. So who who else wants to uh, chime in and have a closing statement? Um, for me personally, I just find any class with you, Grof, to be like a therapy session, if you will, especially these Monday 3 p.m. ones. Um, when you were talking about uh, the fear of just the fear of the too risky, of not choosing a 10 year goal because you're like, what if I'm not there? I think um, every New Year's resolution, my goal is like to journal more. And every year it's like February, it's like non existent. So I think it's just writing it down and find to you know really just to get to know yourself a little bit better know you're good at what you need to work on and then how to improve i'll give you i'll give you a quick trick don't don't set a goal of writing into in your journal every day set your goal that you will not have lunch till you write in your journal every day Hmm. and there's no and there's and there's no uh there's no um negotiating with it Pick anything else. I will not go to bed till I write my journal. I will not have my coffee or I will not get up from my dining table to, to take a shower before I do that. Take, set whatever you've works in your schedule mm-hmm. and set and say, like, I, like I, I, have, I have a deal in my house, right? If, if I'm in the house, my daughter does not brush her teeth at night without me. That's just became a rule. Like that's just, she'll drag me. doesn't matter what I'm doing. Uh, you know, tired, workout, talking to my family, friends at home. Saturday night, whatever, it doesn't matter. My daughter says, I'm home, you're home, we're supposed to brush together. I need to go to bed. So go to brush your teeth by yourself. It's like, no, nope, not allowed. I've got to brush my teeth together with you. And I, get, and I say, yes. Well, that's became a routine. You can do whatever you want. We are the ones who take it easy and say, it's okay. We reduce, we lower our own standards and then, and then expect higher results. We want this, we are willing to do this, and are disappointed if you don't achieve this. Who's stupid, me or them? 
look at yourself every day and, and, and put, you know, like feel your gut and tell yourself, did I do every single thing that I should be doing to be a million dollar agent? Every single thing, every single thing, every single thing that I've read, every single thing that I should be reading that I have not read, every single thing that others are doing around me that I see them doing. Because if you skip one, then you're only 800,000. You skip two, then you're left with 600,000. You lift four, you're left with 200,000. You lift 10, you're about $25,000. All of us know how to sell. All of us know people in the world that we can sell to. Then why is it so challenging? It's not a real estate game. It's a mindset game specializing in real estate. So we'll send an email to everybody. I really sincerely hope that I was able to add some value in your life. And I wish you all the best. 2022, go with a bang. Make this year the best year that it has ever been in your life. Make yourself proud because you deserve everything in this world and more. And then you'll be able to give more to people out to around you as well. Your family, your friends, charity. You want to give a million dollars to charity? You got to make a million dollars to give to charity. You cannot give a million dollars to charity. If that's what really, really drives you, go make three million dollars so you can give a million dollars to charity. Otherwise, don't set a goal that you want to give a million dollars to charity. You can't. Fair enough, guys. It's four or two. I'll let you go. Enjoy your day. And to a wonderful 2022. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.